and welcome, a very warm welcome to The Green Bean. My name is Katie and my trusty sidekick Jack has decided not to sit with me for this uh, for this recording, but uh, he's very much here. I'm sure he will be part of the episode in some way, shape or form. Um, if it's your first time visiting me, a very warm welcome to you. Um, I'm recording in my cosy studio, which is in the Banai Brecheniog National Park in South Wales. And I like to make these videos to document my creative process. I am an illustrator by trade, but I'm also a knitter and knit designer. I sew, I spin, I do cross stitch, all kinds of creative things happen in this studio and I like to use these videos to document the process. So the good and the bad, the ups and the downs, um, and some of the thought and ideas that are behind the choices that I make with the kind of projects that I take on, whether or not I finish them. Um, so if that sounds like your kind of thing, you're in the right place. I hope you've got a project of your own to work on while we hang out and have a chat about what's been going on in my studio lately. It's spring at last here in the mountains and the ground is covered with cotton grass. I've always known this plant as bog cotton because it's really helpful when it's got its white tufts on it. It can show you where the really squishy wet ground is when you're out walking. The only problem of course is if it's everywhere that kind of means that you're on a wet feet kind of walk. In my shop this week I've been busy getting ready for the John Arbon Textiles Mill Open Weekend where I will have a stand, um, I get to set up and display my illustrated goodies and share them with visitors to that event. It's always a lovely, lovely show to take part in. It's in North Devon, um, it's always nice to go back to Devon where I used to live. Um, and I've been busy doing a couple of things for the shop. One is updating these notice boards that I use to display my rubber stamp designs um, since my last show, which was a whole year ago. Um, I have added a, new, a few new rubber stamps to the shop, so I need to display those on my notice boards so people can see them. I've also decided to use some of my sheep fabric to make backing cloths for my shelves. Um, at this show I have shelves that jut out into the middle of the room and I would like to give some thought to the back of that so that it's, people can't see through and see the back of my display. So I thought if I um, sew a simple shape of my sheep fabric I can staple it onto the back of my shelves and it will hopefully make things a little bit more professional and tidy looking. Since I last spoke to you, I have been on the most amazing hiking trip and I'm not going to show you loads and loads of film from it because uh, my dear friend Kat and I are very much working away on vlog videos to document the trip day by day, just like we did with our Wales hiking trip last year. Um, but suffice to say, it was stunning. We were so lucky with the weather. Um, and we started walking the Southwest Coast Path, which is a national trail in southwest England. It runs all the way around the peninsula from North Somerset through North Devon, around the entire coast of Cornwall, back through South Devon and along the south coast of Dorset. Um, the whole thing is 630 miles and we are planning to walk a little chunk of it over probably 10 to 12 years it's going to take us to finish the whole thing. We set quite a slow pace because 
we want to have time to stop and appreciate all of the beautiful things and places and beaches and wildlife along the way. Um, so I'm really looking forward to editing the video of those vlogs and sharing more from that adventure with you. But um, I did want to share a little bit of it because I've started a drawing project inspired by that trip. Um, I don't know about you, but I am someone who, when I go to the beach, I like to collect things. And um, on this trip, we were just carrying rucksacks. We didn't have any extra luggage. We were carrying everything we needed for the week on our backs. So I had to be very restrained about how many pebbles I collected throughout the week. I didn't want to be adding loads and loads of weight to my rucksack. So I limited myself to one pebble a day. Um, so I've got my collection here of six very carefully chosen pebbles. And what I've decided to do is start a little sketchbook project where I draw the pebble and then I draw a little landscape scene from that day. Um, in an ideal world, I would have liked to do this drawing project in the evenings while on my trip. I am just not that artist. Um, when I'm on holiday, I like to take a break from drawing. Also, I was pretty tired by the end of the days hiking out in the sun because the weather was so nice. Um, drawing as much as I love it, sometimes it feels like work and I just don't want to do it. Um, but since I've got home and I've been reminiscing and remembering that trip, it's been really nice to look at these pebbles in detail, go through my photos and pick a moment. Um, so I've, I've started, I've started drawing my pebble from the first day, which I picked up at Porlock Weir, which was the end point of our first day. And this drawing that I'm going with it is is it's an unusual choice. I thought about doing like a picture of the harbour or a picture of the landscape and actually what I chose is this little thing that I noticed on the beach. So they had these wooden groins which are stakes in the ground that basically prevent a beach from eroding or at least are designed to help prevent it from eroding. Um, the beach at Porlock is a pebble beach and these groins had huge pebbles kind of wedged in between the um, the stakes and I, I just found it really beautiful where the sunlight was shining through them and the interesting shapes of the pebbles so that is the image that I've decided to to draw to go along with the pebble that I picked up from the ground on that day. I'm undecided yet whether I'm going to leave these drawings as they are in just black and white, so drawn with a, a faint pencil outline first, but then just line work in my beloved and favourite Pigma Micron pen, or whether I'm going to add some washes of colour. Um, part of me thinks it would be really nice to add a little bit of colour. One of the things that's beautiful about these pebbles that I've chosen is the colours, so it seems like I would maybe lose something if I didn't paint to capture the colour as well. But I do also love these drawings in black and white. It's always tricky, so I don't know, maybe what I'll do is finish them in black and white, scan them so at least I have a reference of the black and white version, and then add some colour and see what I think. And if I hate it, then at least I've documented the black and white version um, and I'll, I'll know for next year whether I intend to carry on doing them in black and white or add a little bit of colour.
When I was planning this episode and trying to decide what to talk to you about in my knitting segment today, I was feeling honestly a little bit down on myself. I've been feeling a bit frustrated with my knitting for the last more than a year, I think. I feel like I've struggled to focus on any one project. I feel like I've hardly finished anything and I was being a little bit mean to myself. Um, and then I remembered I do actually have a finished project that I can show you um, that I talked about in the last episode. So this is not my Hool hat by Ella Gordon, it is a headband. And the reason it's a headband is because I did not do a swatch, I did not check my gauge, and when I started doing the increases for the hat it was just too small. The actual, um, I think the stitch gauge is fine because it fits nicely around my head and it would have made a good hat, but my row gauge was all wrong which meant that the decreases happened too quickly and when I had knitted the crown what happened is it actually sat up here on my head and the top of the hat kind of, it, it looked terrible. So um, rather than rip it out and start again because I wanted this project to wear for my hiking trip I um, did the only thing that I could do I ripped it back to the beginning of the shaping and then I knitted a section of plain stocking stitch and then grafted together along this edge turned it into a headband actually it turned out to be more useful than a hat because the weather was really nice on my hiking trip so I didn't really need the warmth of a hat and to be honest I didn't really need much of a ear covering for wind either but it was a nice thing to have. I'm really glad I made it and I'm pleased with the finished product even if it wasn't the finished product I was intending to make. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, to recap then the pattern is by Ella Gordon. It is for a hat not a headband. Um, it's a beautiful stranded colour work pattern that despite how lovely and complicated it looks, like all good fair isle, it only uses two colours per round so it wasn't too complicated to knit. I used four colours from Jameson's of Shetland and this one bright contrast of yellow is from JC Rennie and I'm really pleased with the finished product. Um, I do also have a new-ish project to share with you. Um, I have chatted about this one on Patreon before but I think this is the first time it's making an appearance here on the podcast. This is... well, actually let's go back and talk about what I was planning to talk about in terms of knitting and I think redefining my idea of what success means as a knitter. I think it's very easy in our culture to get wrapped up in the idea that we need to continue doing things, being productive in order to be successful and um, you know as much as that goes against my values I often find myself getting caught up in thought processes like that about my work and indeed about the crafts that I do in my spare time as well. Um, so knitting is no exception and to find myself thinking oh Katie you haven't finished enough projects is not surprising but it does encourage me to kind of stop and be like oh why am I feeling like that? Does, do I actually believe that? And when I go back and look at what I have knitted over the past year 
one particular project comes to mind. It is, I think, the only garment that I've finished in the last year or so, um, which is my pink self-drafted jumper made in peace fleece. And while I've been giving myself a hard time about not finishing enough knitting projects, I'm glossing over the fact that that's probably the most successful knitting project I've ever made, um, because I have worn it all winter. Um, and it reminded me that I don't necessarily need to have lots and lots of different jumpers. Um, what that jumper really showed me is I, as soon as I had that in my wardrobe, I didn't really want to wear any of my other hand knitted jumpers. It was my first in a kind of uh, more positive ease, oversized shape. And I don't know why it took me so long to try something like that. It's just been a joy to wear, so comfortable. It's easy to layer on top of things. It's easy to wear underneath dungarees. It's a brilliant shape. I love the warmth of the higher neck and it just eclipsed all the other pieces in my wardrobe and really taught me a lot about what silhouettes I like to wear, how I like to get dressed and what's practical for my new home in the mountains. So if you look at it that way, it's an extremely successful knitting project and a very successful year of knitting. If you don't measure it by quantity of projects finished, but you measure it by how valuable is the thing that I've made? How useful is it? What have I learned from it? Um, it's been an extraordinarily rich year for my knitting, if you look at it on those terms. So that was a nice thought process for me to go through and it explains why I've cast on basically another version of that self-drafted jumper. Um, this piece of ribbing is the second piece, the back. I've actually already finished the front. Here it is. Um, and it's the jumper is going to be almost exactly the same as that pink one that I made. The only difference is because it's floofy and it's got mohair in it, I do not want a high neck on this one. I'm actually going to do a crew neck. Um, I'll probably knit a long piece of ribbing and fold it over to make a nice sturdy collar. But yeah, I don't I don't want mohair up around my neck. So um, yeah, this I've decided to call my glowing moss jumper, which is a reference to Animal Crossing New Horizons. If any of you are still playing that, I certainly am. Um, I unsurprisingly love the glowing moss and my island is very glowing moss themed. So um, yeah, this this jumper, this fabric that I've created just reminded me of that. Um, the yarns I'm using, two yarns, I bought these at Yarndale and I didn't go to Yarndale last year, so it must have been Yarndale the year before. Um, this colour is, uh, is from River Knits. It's in their Nen 4-ply, which is 100% Blueface Leicester. Uh, the colour is called Mind the Sill, which is a boating reference. I believe the sill is a part of a lock which tends to collect grime and algae and muddy water and it created this beautiful browny, greeny, goldy colour which I absolutely love. And this mohair is from Cat and Sparrow. It's a silk mohair. I can never remember the name of it, so I'll pop it up on the screen. Um, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous colour. In fact, um, it makes me laugh because this is almost the exact colour that the carpet was in my childhood bedroom. And at the time, I hated it, absolutely hated it. I, um, I liked things to be blue when I was a child and this colour, I called it snot green, bogey green, I hate that carpet. And now, of course, I've come to appreciate this colour um, in everything that I do. Um, I, I wonder if I went back in time whether I'd find that carpet really beautiful or whether I would just find it a bit gross and 70s. I don't know. But anyway, this reminds me of my childhood bedroom carpet. And as ever, when you hold a um, hand dyed yarn with a mohair, it creates something else. Some kind of magic happens when you hold those two yarns together. It creates something that is greater than the sum of its parts, I think, and I absolutely 
love, love, love this fabric. This month, my partner and I are celebrating nine years since we adopted dear little Jack. He was four and a half when he first came to us, which means he's getting on for 14 years old, which I think is pretty amazing given how sprightly he still is. Um, people often ask me what breed Jack is, and of course, because he was rescued, I don't know. I do know that he's the best and most loved little dog in the entire universe. I've recently finished a spinning project. Well, at least I finished the spinning stage of it. These two bobbins will need to be plied together. Um, this is about 300 grams in total, 150 grams on each bobbin of a beautiful fiber blend by Cat and Sparrow UK. Uh, the color is called Rushes and it's a blend of 40% alpaca 40% merino and 20% mulberry silk and it was a joy to spin. Um, there was a little bit of um, a challenge to manage the different staple lengths of the fibre. The silk was very very long and quite slippery and the alpaca was a little bit shorter and the merino was even shorter still so making sure I got them evenly blended was a little bit challenging to me as a newish spinner but I'm really pleased with what I've got. I think there's a slight discrepancy in the weight of my singles. This bobbin looks like it's a little bit finer than this bobbin but I think by the time I've applied the two together it will all even itself out. Um, my plan for this spin is a beautiful shawl design by Kirsten Kapoor called Abide. Um, it's from a book called Drop Dead Easy Knits, which I have yet to acquire a copy of, but um, it's not my usual style to buy a book just for one pattern, but I've honestly been thinking about this shawl pattern since I saw Sarah of the Fibre Trek podcast wearing a version of it at Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which can't have been any more recently than 2019, which was the last Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So I think I've been thinking about this pattern for over five years. I think that means it's okay to buy a book just for the one pattern and I'm sure there will be some other beautiful things in there that I want to knit as well. Um, obviously I'm a little way off casting that project on. These bobbins are resting. Obviously one of them was finished a while ago. The most recent one I just finished spinning it yesterday so I want to give it a little bit of chance to rest so the singles are not quite so lively before I ply them together, which means it's time for a new spinning project. And I've done mostly big spinning projects lately. I spun for my Hobbit waistcoat, which we'll come back to in the future. I ran out of yarn. We'll revisit that later. I spun for my Barn Owl jumper, which I'm still working on. And then I spun this for a shawl. I think it's time for a fun little palette cleanser of a spinning project. Something small, something with no particular purpose in mind, um, just to try something different, enjoy the process of spinning. And I recently went to Wonderwall Wales with my friend Ella. Hi Ella, if you're watching. Um, 
and Ella is a brand new spinner like me and got really excited about all the different fibres available at Wonderwall and Ella's excitement kind of rubbed off on me a little bit and I picked up these bags of mixed hand dyed fibres from a place called the Shepherd's Hut. One bag is all um, dyed pieces of Wensleydale, there's some combed tops in here but there's also some raw locks that have been dyed and the same with the other bag which is Blueface Leicester. Some combed tops, some raw locks, some very raw, there's some little bits of um, all sorts in here but um, I have no project in mind for these. The colours are wild and I'm thinking I'm just going to experiment. I've never spun anything from raw before. I've only spun processed combed tops which has been very easy on me as a newbie spinner. I think it's time to get into a little bit more adventurous fibre processing. I do have a drum carder. Um, Ella and I had a lot of fun playing with it with our fibres after Wonderwall. So I've decided to basically use the drum carder to comb these fibres to tease out the locks a little bit, remove some of the nasty bits that I don't want in my yarn and also to blend these fibres together a little bit. I've got no particular purpose in mind so I don't really mind what happens with the colour. I'm not trying to achieve any particular effect like a striping or anything like that. I'm just going to uh, put them through the drum card and see what happens and then hopefully that will teach me something about the process of working with fibre like this so that next time I do it I might be able to do it with a bit more direction. It was quite fun but also quite hard work putting these um, fibre blends through the drum carder. The Wensleydale went through a little bit more easily than the Blueface Leicester but I think that's just because some of the Blueface Leicester locks were very um, tightly matted together and I had to discard a few pieces because I couldn't comb them out but altogether I'm pretty pleased with the blends I've made. I was intending to blend the whole lot together to mix the Blueface Leicester and the Wensleydale but as I combed through each um, each bag on its own I came to really love the blends that I've made and decided to keep them separate so I've created three different bats of blended fibres from those three bags. They're only 50 grams each so they're going to be tiny amounts of yarn um, and I've never actually spun from a bat before either, that's going to be a new experience for me with the fibres kind of going in different directions a bit more than I'm used to but um, I think it's going to be fun and um, my friend Ella inspired me, I, I showed her photos of these bats that I'd created and she inspired me to create names for them. So this first one made from the Wensley Tale is called Bog Unicorn and the second one made from the Blueface Leicester is called Swamp Wizard and the final one I struggled to find a name of the same genre for it but I settled in the end on Pond Person and part of me really wants to make little hand illustrated labels for these three little yarns that I'm going to create if I um, find myself in a parallel universe where I've suddenly got a load of spare time I might have a go at doing that but I'm pretty tied up with illustration work at the moment so I won't be doing that just now but um, I do like the idea that I might create some fun illustrated labels for my unique hand spun creations. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of The Green Bean and thank you especially to the lovely folks who support this project financially both on Patreon or by leaving a donation on Coffee. 
I love making these videos, I'm sure that much is evident in the, the finished product, but there's a lot of time and effort that goes into both documenting my work and recording and editing, so as much as I enjoy doing it, I do need financial support to make it possible. Um, I genuinely couldn't do it without you, so if you're one of the lovely folks who supports me over on Patreon or Coffee, thank you so much for making it possible to keep sharing my work in this way. I appreciate you beyond words. Um, because I know someone's going to ask, uh, I should also mention the shirt that I'm wearing. I bought this shirt from a maker called Jane Hunter at Wonderwall Wales last month. Um, it is an eco-printed secondhand silk shirt that Jane has dyed and then printed with leaves and flowers. I fell in love with it. The colours are just very me and I have been wearing it a lot since I bought it. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I don't often buy um, ready-to-wear clothes. I like to make my clothes as much as I can, but this felt like something that was worth making an exception for. Um, I think that's it. That's all for this episode. Thank you again for, for joining me, for leaving a comment, for sharing, telling other people about the video if you enjoyed it. Um, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend some time hanging out with me and I will see you soon. Bye!